But Jesus came and listened to me. Page 346. We are actually, is this the new one? Yeah. We, it's sort, we were of, sort of new. Sweet. We've sang it before, but it's been a long time. So you pray for us tonight. You all know it. Hopefully you know it. Yeah. Hopefully I know it. Yeah. What do you pray. mean, hopefully you know it? Pray real sweet. Jesus, page 120. Let's stand on this song. Sam, I need a little bit of piano. I can't hear it at all. Please. Page 120. Let's stand tonight. 
Let's sing victory in Jesus. If you've got victory, you ought to be able to sing about it tonight. And if you want to, listen, if you feel comfortable tonight, say so can someone's hand you, go ahead and do that. I believe in it, and we, uh, I believe God wants us to have it tonight. So let's sing victory in Jesus. Ready? Man, praise the Lord. <laughs> Victory in Jesus. I'm waiting. Oh, I thought he was going to jump off of there or something. No. You going to sing? You going to test me out there? You going to sing? Yeah. Come on up here. All right. Oh, not yet. All right. Got to get him ready. All right. All right. Well, it's time to get in the worship part of the service. This is your opportunity to. To bless God, because listen, I know God's blessed you. Amen. Amen. And I believe sometimes God just likes to hear from us. So anyone at all, while Brother Butch is getting a song ready, would you like to stand? Go ahead, sis.
Yeah. Bless your heart. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else tonight? You ready, brother? Yep. Come on up here. Break much in prayer for Brother Butch. If you have a testimony, you stand in honor of the Lord tonight. I'm glad to be a Christian tonight. Thankful for all the blessings the Lord has blessed my way. And I feel I need to sing, sing and praise him. You pray for us. Since I can remember, I believe with all I have on the one who created everything. Though this world we're living in is doomed to pass away, I still believe I have a home not made by hand. I believe there's a heaven far beyond all sorrow and care. I believe I'll live forever for my treasures and my heart's already there. Let not your hearts be troubled. Just believe what Jesus said. In my Father's house are mansions untold. If I go prepare a place, then I will come again and receive you to myself and take you home. I believe there's a heaven far beyond all sorrow and care. I believe I'll live forever for my treasures and my heart already there. Sister asked me to sing this one, so I'll sing another one. You pray for us. There was a hill, three crosses stood. Upon that hill, three men would die. Two were bad, one was good, enough to take the place of a sinner such as I. Though they nailed him to the cross, the crime was not his own. The penalty he paid was for sin that I had done. When they read my life story in the courtroom up in glory, and there's no doubt they will, it will start with these four words. There was a hill. There was a hill, a sacred place. Life and death met face to face a battle raged it seemed that death had won but the one who died for me rose again it was god's own son though they nailed him to the cross the crime was not his own the penalty he paid was for sin that I have done when they read my life story in a courtroom up in glory. And there's no doubt they will. It will start with these four words. There was a hill. Anybody else? Testimony for the Lord. 
Lord sure is awful good to us, isn't he? Sure is. These couple songs have been on my heart, and I want to sing them. I'm a table for you. Anybody with a testimony for the Lord? your heart play. Amen. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've got questions for tomorrow. There's been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave That my trials only come to make me strong Through it all, through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus And I've learned to trust in God Trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Thank Him for the mountains, and I thank Him for. Trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His word. Yes, I've learned to depend upon His word. Amen. Praise the Lord.
There's a danger sound in front of us. I know we'll surely come when that eastern sky will open wide, revealing God's dear Son. And I know from here to heaven is but the twinkling of an eye. And in the midst of all his glory, we'll hear the sweetest cry. Welcome home. I knew. Anybody else this evening with a testimony for the Lord or a song you'd like to sing? Before we call the preacher to come. Well, Micah, you come on up and do what you need to do. You want to sing, you sing. If you want to preach, you preach. And let God use you tonight. Be much in prayer for Micah as he comes. Uh, wow, you go and turn to 1 Kings chapter number 8. I guess I might as well sing one, ain't that right, Jim?
Well, I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Hands and brains, treasures and fame are never enough. Then you came along. Satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Well, I'm not afraid. seen them all and you still call me friend cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh there's nothing Nothing is better than you. Amen. There's nothing better than the Lord tonight. Amen. 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 First Kings chapter. Let me turn my mic on real quick. Might want to do that. First Kings chapter number eight is where we're going to be at tonight. If everyone is satisfied. First Kings chapter number eight. Let me find what I'm looking for here. And when you get there, if you would stand and say amen. 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 Devil's fighting us tonight, church. Go ahead and pray for us. First Kings chapter number 8, starting in verse number 22. If you're there, why don't you go ahead and say amen. amen. And the Bible says, And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, and the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands toward heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, <laughs> there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Who has kept thy servant David, my father, that thou hast promised him? Thou spakest also with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Therefore now, Lord God of Israel, keep thy servant David, my father, that thou promisedst him, saying, There shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so that thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto thy servant David, my father." But will, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heavens of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built in. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for who you are. God, Lord, we're thankful for the sweet spirit that we feel tonight. God, I, I pray, Lord, that uh, God, most importantly, Lord, that you'd search me, oh God, I pray. Lord, cleanse me of all unrighteousness. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just make me a fit subject for your kingdom. God, I pray. Uh, Lord, that you'd use me in a mighty way tonight. God, I pray, as we always say, Lord, that you'd help me to get out of the way, Lord, so you can get in the way. God, I pray, hide me behind your cross. Uh, Lord, let us learn something about your word tonight, I pray. Uh, God, use me in a mighty way tonight, Lord, and we're so thankful, God, I pray, uh, Lord, that when we're done here, Lord, we'll honor and glorify you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name that I pray, amen, amen. Uh, 1 Kings chapter number 8, here we come, and... Uh, 
Uh, we see a, a prayer that Solomon begins to pray. Uh, they, he comes to the congregation and the Bible says that he stretches out his hands uh, toward the heavens and he begins to pray. Uh, but before that, you would read about how uh, they had begun to bring the Ark of the Covenant into the temple that Solomon had built. If you'd read, uh, God's will was that Solomon would build a temple there in Jerusalem and the Bible says that he did that. And the Bible says that they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant in. And the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord fell and the Bible says that Solomon, uh, he stood there and he spoke before the congregation. And then he begins to pray and he says this. He said, a Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee. <laughs> I like how he starts off. He says, there is no God uh, like thee. So tonight, if it'd be all right, I want to preach a message called, there is no one like him. Yeah. There's no one like him. Hey, hey, church, I've searched the world. I sang, I sung about, I searched the world and not anybody that I found, not any God, not anything uh, can come close to the, uh, to the glory that God has shown. There's nobody like him. Uh, uh, but they're bringing in the Ark of the Covenant. And, and, and I wonder why Solomon started off by saying that. He, he started off, he said, there's no one like thee, God. I begin to think about it. And, and I, I believe that he just wanted to remind the people about where God had brought them from. Amen, preacher, where God had brought them from. There's nobody like him tonight, church. And Solomon, he, he told him, he said, remember, uh, you started off in bondage back in Egypt. Uh, you started off back there in a, a, you were in a bad way, but the Bible says that God sent you a deliverer by the name of Moses. And the Bible says that uh, he, he delivered you out of the land of Egypt and he brought you into the promised land uh, 40 years later. But can I tell you, he said, uh, we've gotten to this place. He said, oh, you, you've had Saul, you had David. And when David messed up, he said, God was faithful to David. He said, there's nobody like him. Amen. He said, even when David fell astray, he said, God was still faithful. Yes. You see, church, there's nobody like him tonight. Amen. There's nobody like him tonight. Right. I, be, I begin to think about what makes our God so different from every other God that you see. And the first thing, the first thing that got me going was the first thing is, is that he is a real God. He is a real God. Uh, you ask me, preacher, how do you know that he is a real God? Well, can I tell you, I know he's a real God because he's spoken to me. Amen, yeah. hey, man, preacher. <laughs> How my mind goes back to Elijah in the book of 1 Kings chapter number 19. Uh, when he was in the cave, the Bible said uh, that he had run from Jezebel. The Bible said that he was so scared for his life and that he went to a cave. And can I tell you uh, that you will not go anywhere in life if you're dwelling in a cave. Uh, but you've got to get out of the cave. But the Bible says uh, that Elijah came to the cave. And the Bible says that God, the Bible says the Lord passed by. If you go, that's what it says. It says the Lord passed by. And you read about how uh, the Bible Bible says that the wind came and the Bible says but the Lord was not in the wind and an earthquake came and the Bible says that the Lord was not in the earthquake <laughs> but he said the fire came and he said the fire was not or the Lord was not in the fire he said but a still small voice came and he said that's where I heard the Lord you see, my mind goes back to that because I remember of all the times <laughs> I, I, I was in life and God spoke to me. He said, Mikey, you shouldn't be doing that. Mikey, you shouldn't say that. Mikey, you shouldn't think that. Mikey, you, hey, get out of the cave. Mikey, you've been dwelling here too long. Mikey, you forgot about what I've done for you. You forgot about where I brought you from. You see, the next reason I know he's real is because he's done real things. He's done real things. You see, uh, the Bible says that Elijah had just come out of the mountain. And the Bible says that he was sitting there. And the Bible says he challenged the prophets of Baal. He said, I'll let you pick your bullock. He said, I'll let you pick how you do it. He said, I'll let you cry out to your God uh, for as long as you want to. He said, but then I'm going to take over. And the Bible says and that the 450, there was 450 of them. Yes, amen. 450. Now, I'm not no math major. I'm not a mathematician by any means, but 450 beats one any day of the week. Am I not right? Am I not right? 450 sounds a lot better than one. You see, but it all matters about who the one is. Yeah, it all matters about who that one, you see. But the Bible says that the, those 450 prophets begin to pray and they begin to cry out to their God. And the Bible says that Elijah began to make fun of them. He said, he said don't worry, he's just asleep. <laughs> He's just asleep. Maybe if you cry louder, you'll wake him up. Uh, maybe he went on a trip. 
Maybe he just can't hear you because he's too far away. He said, keep crying out. And the Bible says that the time came where Elijah, he said, he said, all right, it's my turn. And the Bible says that he told him, he told him to go get a barrel and, and fill up the trench that he had dug around the bullock three times. And he said, you know what, go ahead and soak that bullock out while you're at it. And the Bible says that he cried out to God. And the Bible says that immediately fire fell from heaven and swallowed up that bullock. But not only the bullock, how about the water that he set around it? And can I tell you that my God does real things. You see, he did something real for Elijah, but Elijah quickly forgot what God had done for him. He had quickly forgot what God had done for him. And then God reminded him using that still small voice. You see, uh, my mind goes back to the verse where the Bible says that a de an evil and adulterous generation will search for a sign. But the Bible says that there'll be no sign given. You see, God doesn't come to you in the, in the glory, in the, the, the big fancy, in the, uh, the majestical ways, but he comes to you in a still, small voice. Yes, he can use those things to, uh, to get your attention, but I promise you, when you get close to God, he'll talk to you in that still, small voice. But he does real things. He does real things. Uh, but not only, uh, he also, he kept David, did he not? The Bible says that David was on the mountaintop or on his rooftop and he saw Bathsheba. And the Bible says that he desired, he inquired of who she was. And the Bible says that he desired her. And the Bible says that he laid with her, but yet God remained faithful to David. You see, I know he's real because he kept his promise. I know he's real because he kept his promise. You read in verse 23, it says, And the Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above, on earth beneath, who keep his covenant. Who keep his covenant and mercy. You see, he kept his promise. He, did, uh, did he not say that he'd never leave us and he'd never forsake us? Did he not say that he'd go with us always, even until the end of the world? You see, my, I know that my God's different because he's real. I know he's different because I, I can go and I can find other things of this world. Now, but can I tell you that they will all one day burn. You see, but when everything else is burning, there's only one God that'll stand firm. Because I know He's real tonight. He is a real God. He kept the promises that He made. But not only is He a real God, but He is a reasonable God. He's a reasonable God. Well, preacher, what do you, what do you mean He's a reasonable? You see, I can be an unreasonable person sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I get my own flesh, I, I, I become selfish, but can I tell you that God never once becomes selfish. You see, He's always caring for you. He's reasonable. Uh, he, and the biggest thing that i found that uh, 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 attributes to His reasonableness is His forgiveness. His forgiveness. Uh, he, he said, there's no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keep His covenant and mercy. You see, mercy, we don't deserve mercy. We don't deserve God. We don't deserve what God has in store for us. We don't deserve heaven. We don't deserve this earth that he built for us. You see, but he's reasonable. He's a God of forgiveness. You see, he forgave. He forgave David when David messed up. And Solomon recognized that he forgave. Uh, he forgave. Um, uh, he forgave Paul. Remember Saul on the road to Damascus. Uh, and the Bible says that he was going around persecuting Christians, and the Bible says that a bright light shone. You see, he forgave Saul and made him Paul. He's a God of second chance after second chance after second chance after second chance. You see, that's why my God is better than the others. That's why my God, that's why, that, that's why there's nobody like him is because even when I fall short and even when I stumble, I can still say, you know what? Beyond the shadow of a doubt, I know that I know that I know that if I ask for forgiveness, that my God is faithful and just to forgive me. Does the, book, does the Bible not say that? He says if we should confess our faults and failures, that he's faithful and just to forgive us of those. You see, he's reasonable. Did you know that Abraham reasoned with God? Abraham reasoned with God. You see, I, I started this thing where yeah, I started this thing where I'm reading through the Bible the whole way through. And, and I'm, I got caught up on when Abraham was talking to God. And, and when Abraham was talking to God about Sodom and Gomorrah, and he said, if you find 50, if you find 50 righteous, would you save the city? And God said, if I find 50 righteous, I'll spare the city. And Abraham began to think about it. 
He said, well, if I can get him to go 50, I might be able to get him to go lower. And he said, look, the way that Abraham worded it, he said, he said Lord, I don't want to make you mad when I ask you this. I don't, I don't want to upset you in any way. He said, but if you find 45, would you save the city? And God said, you know what? If I find 45, I'll save the city. And he went to, he went to 40, he went to 35, or he went to 35, he went to 40, or 30, and then he went to 25. And then the Bible says, he said, Abraham, he said, Abra or he said God, he said, I don't want to upset you. He said, but if you find 10, if you find 10 righteous, if you find 10 righteous, would you save the city? And you know what God did? He said, Abraham, if I find 10 righteous, I will save the city. And we all know how that story ends. Sodom and Gomorrah is destroyed, so I don't think God found 10 righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. But God, or Abraham reasoned with God. You see, because God wants what's best for us. Yes. You see, we have, you know why my God's different? Because not only does he talk to me, but I can talk to him. Amen. Not only does he talk to me, but I can talk to him. I can go to him and say, you know what, God? I, 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 I can ask him for something. And I, I, can, I can beg for something. And the Lord says that he'd give me the desires of my heart if it's his will. You see, I, I believe we get too caught up in the asking you shall receive things. I asked for a truck for my birthday. I don't think I got it. I'll be honest with you. You see, <laughs> you see, <laughs> You ask can you shall receive? No, but if it's the Lord's will, I believe the Lord wants to give it to you because he's a reasonable God. He's a reasonable God that loves us. You know why? You know why else that God is different from the rest of them? You see, I'm, I'm kind of flying right now, church. I'm not even looking at my notes. This is coming to me as I'm giving it to you. But, uh, I can feel his love. I can feel him. You see, the preacher this morning, he said it's not based on feeling, but I'm sure glad that I can feel him sometimes. You see, I bet you those prophets of Baal didn't feel a thing. I, be, I believe you. What, why do you think they started cutting themselves when Baal didn't respond? Amen. Why do you think they began to, 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 to cry out and they were so upset? Oh, but when, God, when Elijah cried out to God, the Bible says that fire fell and the presence of the Lord showed up. You see, we can feel him, church. We can feel God. We can feel him tonight. But not only is he real, not only is he reasonable, but he's a resurrected Savior. That's my favorite one. That's my favorite one. He's a resurrected Savior. Man, you ain't, y'all ain't getting excited about that. You see, I can go on over. I, I can go look at the tomb of Buddha. I look in there, I'll see a body. I go look at the tomb of Muhammad, I'll still see his bones laying there. I like that song that they sing. It starts, uh, I walk by the tomb of Buddha, <laughs> still wrapped up in his grave. And then, they, and then they go on and it says, but then I passed by <laughs> the tomb where they laid Jesus. Yeah. And the Bible says uh, that there's nothing there. There's nothing there because he's alive. Amen. He's alive. How do I know that he's real? Uh, because he's alive and not only is alive, but he's alive forevermore. Amen. You see, he's not going to die again. He's a resurrected Savior. He's not dead, church. He's not dead. That song goes on to saying, or to say, if you knew him like I know him, then you would know that he's alive. You see, church, if you knew, if you're lost and undone here tonight, if you knew God like I know God, you would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is real. You would know that there's nobody like him. You would know that not a, not a, a, a nothing in this world could even compare to him. Right. Nothing. Right. You see, if I do happen to get that truck for my birthday, it won't even come close to how good God is. Amen. It won't even come close. <laughs> it won't even. He's a real God tonight. He's different than the others. He's better than the others. You see, I don't want some fake God that someone made up because they were feeling a little down. I don't want a fake God that someone made up uh, because they didn't like what the Bible had to say. You see, I want a God that's going to uh, that's gonna change my life. You see, I want a God that's not going to keep me the same creature that I once was. You see, the, all the other gods of this world, you see, they'll keep, you won't change a bit. You won't change nothing. You see, but you run to God. <laughs> You run to God, you'll be a different creature. Yes, hey, I like to sing the grass is greener, the sky's bluer. Hey, the, the world looks different when you find God. 
You see, there's nobody like him tonight, church. I like what he says in verse 27. He says, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? (laughs) He said, behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee. Why do you think he built the heavens and the earth? Because he needed it all. (laughs) Why do you think he needed it? You see, I I believe that God's big enough that he's everywhere at once. At all times. Samuel or Solomon, he said, he said, how can this building that I built contain thee? He said, it can't. He said, it can't. He said, because you're not like the others. My mind goes back to when Moses, he, he went upon the mountain. And the Bible says how that he, he was carrying the Ten Commandments down with him. And the Bible says that he saw that they had resurrected a, a golden calf. And the Bible says that uh, Moses, he looked at him, he said, now why'd y'all do that? Why? You see, they, they wanted something that they could see. They wanted something uh, that they could physically touch. You see, but they were looking in the wrong places. You see, they, uh, they built this golden calf. The Bible says that Moses got so mad, he, he threw down the Ten Commandments. And the Bible says uh, uh, that, he, uh, uh, that he crushed up that golden calf and made him drink it. You see, God's real tonight, church. He's not like the others. There is nobody like him. You see, nothing in this world can compare to who God is. Nothing in this world can compare to what God does. And nothing can, in this world can compare to the love that he shows us. You see, I, I'm, I look out I look out at the world and I look at the, uh, the wonderful and beautiful creation that we see around us. And it blows my mind. It blows my mind that you can deny the existence of God. It blo- how, how in the world is it possible how that the earth rotates on a certain degree axis and if it tilts off that axis by even 1%, then the whole world blows up? How is it possible that, uh, the sun, that all the planets rotate around the sun? They, they are, they're all in orbit together. How is it possible that uh, the world is moving so fast but we can't even feel it? You see, that's my God. You see, that's how real my God is, is he can do whatever he wants to. You see, my God's so real that the Bible says that he spoke the heavens and earth into existence. You see, the Bible says that he spoke. He said, let us make man in our own image. You see, my God's that good. My God's that real. My God is that good at his job that he can just speak it, and it has to happen. You see, there's no choice but for it to be done. You see, everything is under God's control. Church, there's nobody like him tonight. There is nobody like my God. Solomon said, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee. In heaven above or earth beneath, who keep his covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Church, there's no one like God tonight. There is nobody. When I say this, I mean it. There is nobody, not one thing in this world that can compare to the love of Christ tonight. As we stand, as we stand, I know it was a short message, but I don't think my voice can.